Good evening. Thank you everyone for coming to the June 20th Windsor Township Planning Commission. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, we all know why you're here. Thank you for coming. I'd like to uh, hear a motion to dispense the reading of the minutes. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, approval of the minutes. And a second? I'll second. A second, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, public comments other than solar related stuff. Is anybody here for anything else? All right, moving on to old business. Uh, we're going to go out of order here a little bit. Uh, Blue Heron Village final plan. I believe this issue has been resolved and is going to be removed from the agenda moving forward. Um, Ron's Construction and H&K Group. Is anybody here from H&K? All right, so that's going to get tabled and moved to the next meeting, which will be in August. Uh, and then Josh Snyder, the Snyder subdivision. Josh, are you here? Did we ever get the plans? The signatures? No, I think it's still in the work. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's still on. That's so that. I got final. Like they, they're done with what they're doing. They bought the properties. Yeah. People just, just need to finish. We just need to sign the. Yeah. yeah. We just need yeah. To sign so okay. Like, I think we're still waiting for plans. Then we will table that to the August meeting as well. All right. So that leaves us with uh, Mountains Trail Solar. I believe that Mountain Trail Solar is going to be um, presenting. Is that correct? Correct, yes. Yep, and then uh, we are going to take questions similar to the last meeting that we had here. Everyone that wants to speak will get a chance to speak. Uh, we're going to limit the time for each person to five minutes, and Russell is going to go over the rules of engagement for, um, for the interaction up here at the podium. All right, well, uh, again, I'm Russell Farbiars. I'm the solicitor for the township. And what we're, we're, the format this evening is going to be identical to the to the format that we had at our prior meeting in April. And what that, what that means uh, is that there will be an opportunity for everyone in the, in the public who wishes to make a comment to make a comment. This is, this is a time for public comment to be directed at the, at the Planning Commission. Um, it's not a time for a question and answer. Uh, question and answer will, will happen when we have um, when we have a public hearing uh, on the conditional use application, that will be scheduled before the Board of Supervisors. Uh, we will schedule that once the Planning Commission has made a recommendation uh, on the application. Uh, I believe uh, that what the, the Chairman is proposing here is that we're going to go slightly out of order, however, and we're going to have the presentation uh, from uh, Mountain Trail Solar first, and then there will be public comment after that. Uh, I think that's actually a very good idea because then if there are any comments that arise from the presentation that's made, uh, you will have the opportunity to make those comments as well. Uh, so that, does anyone have any questions about the, the procedure that we are going to be following this evening? Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Solicitor. Mountain Trail Solar, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Sean Gallagher. I represent Mount Trail Solar uh, Planning Commission. Thank you for having us. Uh, it's been a couple of months since we've been here. Um, just to summarize, thank you. This is our third Planning Commission meeting, and. Um, I don't know if many of you were here last time, but there were a lot of questions that were raised, uh, not necessarily with the application's compliance with uh, the zoning ordinance standards, but just in general. Uh, we believe that we've presented a, uh, an application that complies with all the relevant standards in the zoning ordinance, and you know, we request a, a recommendation, at least we thought we would be in a position to be there last uh, in March, but you know, it was tabled to prepare a response to some of the
questions that we heard over and over again. So I have a team here with me, uh, Mr. Horatio Larios, uh, who's the project lead, and uh, Tyler French with Kimley Horn, who's our engineer. And hopefully we can go through and answer a lot of the comments and questions that were raised last time and um, address some of the questions you may have uh, tonight. So, Horatio. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for your time. Uh, as Sean mentioned, I'm Horatio Larios. I am a developer with Leeward Renewable Energy. Um, as we've introduced ourselves before, we are a developer, owner, and operator of renewable energy projects. We have uh, 25 operating facilities across nine states, totally about 2,700 megawatts. And we are a portfolio company of the Ontario Municipal Employee Retirement System. Yes, sir. Just a little short. <laughs> so I think I think everybody's familiar with the slide. Um, we are proposing a 50 megawatt AC solar project, uh, which covers 440 acres. The building coverage is under 20% per uh, the township ordinance, and the proposed interconnection point is the Linville to South Hamburg's 69 kV transmission line. This project, um, this project, if approved, will is expected to start construction in 2025, and the construction period is approximately 12 months. The estimated lifespan is 30 to 40 years, and uh, the other feature that we see here is that the setbacks have been established at two times the township ordinance level. As Sean mentioned, the project is designed to meet the township ordinance requirements uh, for approval of a conditional use permit. One of the first questions, I believe one of the questions that was widely asked during the development process is why are you citing the project here? Uh, this project has, um, the proposed project has an ideal location for solar development. It has direct access to exi existing utility infrastructure, infrastructure and proximity to electric load, electric users. There is electrical capacity on the existing transmission line. There is demand for renewable energy in Pennsylvania and the ordinance allows solar use in agriculturally zoned property. The project is expected to bring in a little bit over $4 million in new property tax revenue, which constitutes approximately a 1,500% increase in property tax revenue from the current status. A little bit over $3 million is expected to go to the Hamburg School District out of that new property tax revenue. The project, uh, there was a lot of questions last time around, around project decommissioning. Um, the project, Leeward Renewable Energy will be fully responsible for end of life decommissioning. The township ordinance and our LRE and our lease agreements require that we decommission the project. There will be a security which is posted prior to the start of, prior to the start of construction and the township ordinance requires that the security be increased 10% every five years, and that will be done. There will be tree screening adjacent to residential properties per the township ordinance, and uh, the residential borders will include dense vegetation screening, as also previously discussed. One of the questions that we heard last time around was, the impact on property values. <coughs> the proposed project will not cause any odors, will not emit noise, will not emit odor. It will not have the attributes of, uh, it will not have the, the attributes that constitute negative adverse impact to surrounding property values. There is quite a good amount of comparative sales analysis that have been performed by professional real estate appraisal firms that use public sales data in order to evaluate the impact of proximity to solar projects. 
A pair, says, a pair cells analysis is an analysis in which two nearly identical properties are analyzed so that uh, an a distinguishing characteristic can be isolated in order to determine the impact of that distinguishing characteristic on the sales value of the two properties. Through these paired value analysis, professional firms, professional appraisal firms have established that solar proximity does not adversely affect property values in adjacent properties. This has been confirmed by academic studies. This has been confirmed by local assessor interviews in over 45 counties where there is at least one solar facility. And this is evidenced uh, through the continued housing development adjacent to solar facilities. One of the other comments that we heard or, or concerns that we heard was that mountain trail will impact temperatures around the surrounding community. Mountain trail will not impact air temperature. Photovoltaic heat island has been analyzed in public peer-reviewed academic studies. Research has confirmed that photovoltaic heat island does not occur outside of desert regions. Research has confirmed that through the process of reestablishing native vegetation, photovoltaic heat island impact is essentially guaranteed to not occur. This project was reviewed by Dr. Berenger, by Dr. Baron Gafford, who's a PVHI expert, whose findings confirm the same. I think one of the, one of the biggest questions that, that has been brought up is the question uh, about the safety of solar PV panels. PV panels have been in operation for decades. PV panels consist primarily of front and back glass strengthened covers with the accompanying aluminum frame. This aluminum frame ensures durability and uh, tightness of the panel components. The other components in solar in PV panels are silicone, which is an inert material. And then there is a very minimal amount of lead used for lead soldering to connect the PV cells to one another. There is yet one more component. There is a plastic laminate which seals off the panels. This plastic laminate also operates to keep the modules together in case of breakage, just like the film on windshields does, so that when windshield gets broken, the entire windshield remains as one unit. There is one more technology, which is thin film technology. Thin film technology is based around uh, cadmium telluride. Cadmium telluride is a compound which is also occurs very minimally in the panels. Um, cadmium telluride is one one hundredth percent of the toxicity of, of cadmium. It is very stable as a chemically bonded compound. This thin film technology also is enclosed by tempered glass and aluminum frames. And this technology is, has also proven to be very safe throughout thousands of hours and decades of operation. There have been photovoltaic panel breakage studies that have confirmed that under the worst case conditions, releases of either lead or cad cadmium telluride do not constitute a public health hazard. And these studies have been confirmed by the Department of Energy and multiple other international energy regulatory agencies, uh, American <coughs> academics, and a whole host of <coughs> other agencies that closely follow and monitor the progress of the solar industry. Another question that 
that we heard was around emergency planning details. Discussions with the fire department have started prior to us submitting the application submission. During the land development process, Mountain Trail will continue to consult with the fire department as the design advances. Plans will be submitted to the fire chief for review and comment. The project will coordinate with local emergency service agencies to develop an emergency response plan and will provide facility familiarization training. There is no special equipment necessary to fight facility fires. I want to turn it over to Tyler. Before, before you do that. Yes, sir. Um, does anyone on the board have any questions with, with regard to this presentation? So I, I have a question. Um, I'm not sure if you'd be the guy to answer it or not, but I guess I'll ask you. So I understand that the, the coverage of the entire project meets the 20% coverage ratio, but is that over the entire project or over each individual parcel? My, and my reason for asking that is because if you had a farm of 100 acres and you concentrated everything in one corner, which constituted 20%, you could have an extremely dense area of solar panels and have you know, a, a huge farm that has no coverage on it whatsoever. So technically you would meet the criteria, but you wouldn't meet it on that specific parcel. So can you address that concern as well? The project, uh, there is enough space in the project to meet either of those definitions. So on each individual parcel is the question, because there's multiple parcels involved in, in the project. Um, I don't know that we have that specific <coughs> breakdown right now, but the ordinance provides that the lot or lots are, can be, the lot, the zoning lot can be more than one lot, so we're, Speak up, that's please. what we're viewing. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? So the question is, right now you're meeting the lot coverage based on the scope of the entire project. Yes. My interpretation of what I read, and I am not you know, a professional like you guys, is that it, it actually could have been interpreted either way, whether it be a parcel or the span of the entire project. It's my understanding that the parcels are not all owned by Mountain Solar. They're going to be leased. There are multiple different owners. And my question is, is on each individual parcel, do you meet the 20% uh, maximum coverage on each parcel individually or only as a project as a whole? So we're, uh, we haven't looked at it, I don't think, uh, specifically on a uh, parcel by parcel process, but I also don't believe we're required to because um, there's a state statute that applies um, when you're determining what the landowner is, and we have an equitable interest in both of those properties. So we're one landowner in particular. So. We would be happy to look at that further, but again, it's an interpretation issue that we don't think is relevant to uh, the determination of the recommendation for this application. Mr. Gallagher, when you're when you're making your calculations on the twenty percent coverage. Are you treating the uh, the panels as impervious structures or, or non-impervious structures? Um, you wanna answer? The panels are being treated as building coverage per the Township Zoning Officer's interpretation. And we're, uh, and we are going to come back. We're going to go through all these questions. I don't know if we're going to, ratios going to finish off, so I don't know if you wanted to wait for the end or keep going the whole way through. Why don't we continue the presentation? Okay. I just wanted to make sure before he left the podium that if they had questions on what he talked about, yeah. that they could ask them. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Tyler. I'm representing the design engineer for the project. Um, in particular today, I'm going to speak with you about um, some of our stormwater design considerations and some of the uh, questions that were brought up at our last planning commission meeting in regards 
to uh, stormwater design and uh, land use. So first and foremost, when uh, we began this project, we, con uh, we uh, did a hydrology study, which took into consideration the existing conditions of the site and identified areas of stormwater, stormwater runoff concentrations. Um, this allowed us to strategically place stormwater uh, management facilities that would help to uh, mitigate some of the um, off-site runoff and to uh, treat the on-site stormwater and also manage it, release it at a managed rate. Um, the stormwater, the, the, uh, the land that would uh, be going from agricultural to stormwater, or to, to solar, um, as you can see in the graphic, um, something that we um, want to point out is that the, the root systems of these different vegetation types um, help to treat stormwater. As you can see in row crop, the, uh, the root systems are more spread out, uh, and when you have a um, native vegetative uh, species on site, it helps to retain some of that stormwater in the soil itself. It also helps to mitigate uh, the velocity of stormwater runoff. Um, in regards to um, some of the farmland pr production considerations, um, we, we would like to point out that uh, solar facilities allow for um, agricultural land to uh, rest their soils and to regenerate some of those uh, health uh, perspectives of the soil. Uh, and we'd also like to point out that this project would be a temporary use as it would be a 30 to 40 year uh, uh, time period. Um, lastly, I would like to, to, to bring up uh, PADP's um, FAQs in regards to solar, uh, specifically building upslope of flooding concerns. Um, this is in regard to FAQ number four, um, which is uh, guidance for projects without stormwater management. Um, and as I stated before, this project does propose uh, stormwater basins to help mitigate the rate of runoff as well as control the volume of stormwater on site. Um, if you cannot meet um, FAQ number four, it's recommended to implement sufficient stormwater mitigation, which again, this project uh, does implement stormwater management uh, facility considerations. Um, and overall, this project, when you take into consideration the stormwater facilities that we are proposing, as well as taking into consideration the land use uh, changes, we, we conclude that it, there, those uh, combinations provide an overall positive uh, benefit in, in regards to stormwater control. There was a question of the environmental studies completed. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I had a quick, I'm a little bit slow. I, I yes, apologize. sir. I had, a, I had a question for uh, Tyler. Um, I, just, I just wanted to be very clear. Um, Tyler, you had referenced the DEP guidance. Um, so what, what you guys are essentially saying is, from a zoning perspective, the solar panels have been considered impervious, but from a stormwater perspective, they haven't been essentially. And, 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 and understand, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not arguing with the DEP guidance. Uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm concerned about is Section 16, uh, 615F in the Zoning Ordinance states that in terms of applying the Stormwater Management Ordinance, the solar panels, solar panels are to be considered impervious also. Again, not disputing guidance by DEP, but you know, it's pretty clear that it needs to be considered impervious. So you have 85 and a half or 87 and a half acres of impervious. You know, I don't see a way of getting around that other than a variance at this point. I, I think I do think, in, in fairness to you guys, there were some discussions months ago, and there was thought of maybe a waiver being applicable. But I, I get the consensus from from the folks here that that that's that's not an option. So. Can you please confirm that the stormwater design will not consider that 87 and a half acres of solar panels as impervious? Well, let me address that in a couple ways. So first, the, the PAD, PFQ, I realize that's not township ordinance. That is certainly uh, solar farm stormwater related guidance. 
um, the purpose of the guidance and also the, what has been applied uh, under zoning ordinances at other municipalities is that even if you're considering the panels as impervious coverage for coverage calculus, uh, calculation purposes, for stormwater management analysis purposes, the ground cover is not impervious. It's grass and soil. So I think um, it's, it's, that's it's, typically it's, our contention. And if, if the position of the township is that the, the panels uh, shall be considered impervious, um, we would concede we would have um, no way to get around designing the stormwater management considering the panels as impervious coverage unless and until we had a, either a different interpretation or some kind of relief. So I don't think we have the ability to answer the question without having a firm determination. Um, all I can say is that we acknowledge that if, if the interpretation is, uh, is agreed upon and <clears throat> there's no way to get relief from that, that the panels are impervious coverage for stormwater management calculation purposes, when we're doing land development, we would have to consider them as such. Yeah, my, my opinion is respectfully, um, the, the zoning ordinance is pretty clear that it, it needs to be considered impervious in, in terms of uh, applying the, the, the stormwater management ordinance. Again, I'm not, I'm not disputing the DEP guidance. I'm not saying there's, it's wrong, but um, I mean, it says it right here. Um, the area of any ground-mounted solar energy system shall be considered lot coverage as established by the underlying zoning district and as regulated by the Windsor Township Stormwater Management Ordinance. Um, I don't think there's any other way to interpret that. Um, what does the stormwater management It, 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 by the stormwater manager, it, it, if this, if the zoning ordinance is telling you that the sol that that the solar panels need to be considered basically as a building roof, that the stormwater management ordinance is going to, it, it's going to be considered impervious, because it says it needs to be considered as building coverage, basically a building. That's the way I would interpret it. I, I, I don't know how you could interpret it any other way. That's the way I interpret it. Right. And, and Steve, what I'm suggesting is that in, in, in this forum and the project moving into land development, if that's the interpretation, we would have no option other than to consider the panels impervious coverage when factoring in our, in, into our stormwater management calculations. We do not have a way around that as you're, as you're stating it right now. Um, so we are not standing here in a position to say that we would um, consider them anything other than impervious. And, and a point to be made here is, on the majority of our projects, uh, solar projects in the state, um, when panels are not considered impervious, we don't have any stormwater facilities at all, and we're proposing stormwater facilities for both on-site and existing off-site conditions, um, so we would be uh, in, a, in a much better position to accommodate that, uh, proposing to do structural facilities as we are on this project. And look, I, I, and I understand, I, the, these, <sighs> These regulations were adopted six or seven years ago, and there was very little empirical evidence at the time to, you know, to, and, and there were no nearby projects to work off of. And, and just to clarify a couple of things, the township was trying to act proactively at the time to address some of this stuff coming out with, with alternative energy. And I think there might have been a misconception with, with some of the public that, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, that the, the regulations that were adopted um, six years ago, you know, allowed the, 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 the this use. This use was always permitted. It was always a legal use. Um, so the township adopted regulations to to try to regulate it because it's a legal use. Um, back to our, the, the stormwater issue. Um, it, the, it's it's a zoning issue. That's the that's the issue. So I, I get what you're saying. It it, it becomes impractical. Um, to treat 87 and a half acres as impervious on the project. I get that. I understand. But the, but the, the fact of the matter is that's what the zoning ordinance says. So either it's, either you, you can't do it or you need to get a variance. I, I, I think that's where we're at. You know, um, th that's my opinion as, as the engineer. I, I'm not saying everybody agrees with me, but that's, that's where I'm at. Yeah, and I, and I think that's, that's valid for, um, for, for land development. Um, we have um, a stormwater management ordinance that would need to be satisfied for land development, and if we're not 
were unable to do that, then we certainly would have uh, a, a need for a variance, um, but not for the conditional use phase. Are, are, you, are you saying then that you think you can address the stormwater with the assumption that 87 and a half acres of impervious is going to have to be addressed? I, the reason I'm bringing it up now, it, respectfully, again, I, 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 don't, I don't want you guys to go down a road where that, that's infeasible ultimately. And I, you know, we might as well we might as well get all our cards on the table right now. If if that's if that's what everybody agrees with from the you know in terms of the planning commission, you, you guys are going to have to decide whether you want to battle that and continue to own the land development, assuming you you get your your conditional use. I, you know, I'm I'm trying to bring the issue up now so you don't do all the design work just to find out that you're going to have to address all that additional storm uh, stormwater. Yeah, just to put a finer point on what Paul was saying, I think what he's saying is if the interpretation is that they are impervious, we would by law have to factor that in. And our project already incorporates stormwater basins, sure. which would be that guidance. It would be the ultimate sizing of those basins during the land development. Absolutely. So that's, I, so I agree we're, with that. We're in, I think what okay. we're saying is we're effectively All right. Well, that. if you guys are saying that you understand that you're going to have to address that, if in fact that remains the, the strict interpretation of it, then... That, that's understandable because I, I realize you guys aren't at a point where you did all the detailed engineering plans and all that. I, I get that. So, again, I just wanted that to be on the table and everybody understand that. Yeah, that, that is what we're saying. Okay. Yes. All right. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, we carried out Alta and topography surveys, stormwater and drainage, uh, existing condition studies, phase one environmental site assessments, wetland delineations, as well as phase 1A cultural resource assessments, and the Pennsylvania Natural Diversity Inventory Study, along with phase one and two bog turtle habitat surveys. Uh, the Pennsylvania, I wanted to address the Pennsylvania Natural Diversity Inventory. Uh, this, this process yielded a determination from, yielded a determination of no impact. Uh, the PNDI is used by the Pennsylvania De Department of Environmental Protection to analyze project footprints against species locations. The PNDI requires responses from the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, Fish and Boat Commission, the Game Commission, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services. The PNDI results were a receipt of uh, no impact for this project from each of the four agencies and no stated concerns for avian species from Hawk Mountain Migratory Bird Preservation Area or other, other migratory species. The other study that was performed was the Noise study, which found that operational sounds will be imperceptible on neighborhood residential properties. There was a couple of other general questions. Uh, one of them was centered around concrete in a solar facility. There will be minimal concrete use in a solar facility. There will be uh, Minor pad mound concretes for the central inverters. There will be some concrete foundations for the project and the utility substation or switchyard. And there will be, then, and no cement is anticipated for the driven piles which constitute the solar, founda solar panel foundations. Um, another question was around whether or not uh, we had done solar projects in Pennsylvania. There was uh, a question around township denials. There have been no township denials. Uh, LRE does have additional solar assets in development in Pennsylvania, and we have operating wind sites in Pennsylvania as well. Somebody brought up the question of why not smaller broken up projects. Economies of scale play a factor in the size of the projects that we propose. Smaller projects would require additional utility interconnection infrastructure as well. Uh, commercial rooftop is a completely different business model and smaller and more expensive facilities such as commercial rooftop lead to more expensive power. 
I could ask you a question going back to the environmental studies. Yes, sir. There, we have we have been advised, and I and I know that your engine that that your team has been advised that part of this project is includes what are called what are commonly referred to as the Sunday grasses. Um, and have you done any studies as to what, if any, impact would would happen on the, on that protected area? Sorry, I'm not familiar with. Okay. With this. We'll follow up on it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I mean, as we outlined, we do believe that we meet with all the relevant ordinance standards. Um, any review letter that we've had, we've timely. Yeah, yeah. Any review letter that we've had, we've timely responded to. So, I know these issues just came up, and we'd be happy to continue that dialogue or address it at the supervisors' meeting. But we do have a project that complies with all the relevant ordinance standards, and on that basis, we would. Uh, ask for a positive recommendation. Be happy to answer any other additional that questions. The you question guys. that he had about the, um, the amount of what you what you had said earlier about the acreage, um, about the twenty percent, and you kind of indicated that was not a situation because we're dealing with it as one property. Yes. And then I was told earlier on that the properties were one of them was going to be leased and one of them was going to be sold. And if that is still the case, I feel that that's two properties and each one has to be dealt with separately. Um, so the, under the, the, the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code's a state statute that governs all the zoning ordinances and subdivision and land development ordinance in Pennsylvania. And they define what a landowner um, is and those agreements are the same entity, whether it's a lease or whatever the contractual rights are, we have the equitable right to those properties. So we're treated as the same owner yeah. under our state law. Even though the Sunday farm is the transmission field between them, I mean, it just the lay of the land kind of indicates it's two properties. Correct, and, but the zoning ordinance allows for a zoning lot to be more than one single property. You can have multiple properties. So it's not going to be considered to, and, and it's not going to be looked into as far as the impervious nature of the 20%? Or the I, I mean, we can, we can look into those questions more, but under the ordinance, we have, we're looking at it as one property, and we comply with it in that way. This issue has not been raised to us until 20 minutes ago. Okay. Even though it's been three months. Thanks. <laughs> no. All right, so uh, we're going to start taking questions now uh, or comments. Uh, as we had mentioned, this is going to be a time for comment. Uh, Mountain Trail Solar won't necessarily be answering these. Time for question and answer will be uh, in front of the supervisors uh, when it actually goes um, on to the next step. So uh, who would like to go first with a comment? Do you want them to come up to the I think so, yeah. All right, if you'd like to talk, you need to be on this sheet. If you're not on it, uh, please come down and put your name on. Uh, the first person on the list is Jeff Bryan. Please come down to the podium, use the microphone. Thanks, Jeff. Good evening, everybody. Thanks to all of you who came out tonight uh, to this meeting. Uh, I think the presence of our uh, citizens of Windsor Township speaks volumes uh, on our thoughts about this proposed solar project. I'm not going to even call it a solar farm. There's nothing agricultural about this. 
<clears throat> we all moved into this area, or some of us have lived here our entire lives, in a beautiful, scenic, rural setting. These people coming in from out of state, in fact, let's be honest, out of the country, they have no ties to our community. They do not care about us as, our, as, as citizens in this community. They do not. They can, they can blow smoke all they want about tax revenue and how this is going to benefit people here. Last I looked, I'm not getting any financial benefit, but we're going to come up with some unnamed study or research to tell me this is not going to impact my property value. You've got to be kidding me. That, that is the most ridiculous, insane statement that I heard all night. And believe me, I heard many. You people couldn't even clearly and coherently answer very simple questions from our planning commission. You know, Mr. Larios, you're up here stuttering and stammering over answers that you should be prepared to answer. But I guess unless we have two or three months to prepare, we can't answer a question. As far, <laughs> as, far as the tax revenue goes, we're going to talk about $3.4 million to the Hamburg School District. Well, do the math. Figure that out over 40 years. What's that really going to amount to? Not a whole heck of a lot. And we talk about the fact that there's no odors coming from this project. Well, I smell a big stench here. <laughs> I smell corruption. This is typical corporate corruption. And boy, do I smell a stench out of each and every one of you. I respectfully ask our planning commission to turn this proposal down. Again, thank you to everybody for coming out. We're going to hear a lot of comments about this tonight. And again, let's do the right thing, turn this down, and preserve our community. Thank you. Next on the list is Linda and Jim Costa. I only want to say one thing. If you don't have these solar panels in your backyard, then for God's sakes, don't put them in ours. Maria Balthaser. Thing up on one for my globe, please. Maria Balthaser, 176 Blau Road. First rule I, I learned in staff class, statistics class, was you can prove anything or disprove anything you want with numbers. So that's, you know, first rule. Yesterday we just happened to have a lunch with some guests. One of them happened to be a realtor. He asked me, what's with the signs? And I told him. And I said, you know, they're telling us it does not affect our property values. He laughed and laughed and laughed. He said, that is the biggest joke he's ever heard. And if you want that information, I can certainly provide his name and the company he's with. The other thing is you're talking about stormwater runoff and everything else, wonderful. You don't talk about anything during that 18 months of construction. Fleetwood has a solar farm that went up. They had a rainstorm during construction, flooded the, the neighboring properties. Well, they're no fault, right? So everything you're saying, once you know your grass is grown and everything else, 18 months, we're gonna be listening to noise, dust, traffic, all of that. Not addressed in here, I didn't see it anywhere. The other thing is, who's willing to give us a phone number if, this, if, if the solar farm goes in to contact because we will be on the phone 
every little thing that goes wrong, somebody is going to answer the phone. So those are my comments based on the presentation. So here's my presentation. After looking at many houses and building lots in northern Berks County, my husband and I found an empty building lot in the middle of Blyle Road, which is, we're right in the center of that, that we both fell in love with. <coughs> that was 27 years ago when we built our family home on a beautiful country road with amazing country views. As we retired, we now often sit on our front porch and have lunch there. We watch the birds, the deer, you know, we watch, I mean, this is something fantastic to watch. And I'll, I'll thank Frederick for it. We watch, it looks like the ocean is going through the fields. As the wind blows, you see it, and it's the most mesmerizing thing. It is awesome for the soul, truly a feast for the, for the senses. But what's gonna become of our view if the solar farm goes in? We're gonna be looking at a fence and solar panels. Not, not comparable, not at all. So as I said, during construction, 18 months, we're gonna have noise, traffic, dust, as you guys strip away all the fields and you know that we enjoy now. And then what's gonna happen to our wells? Are they gonna go dry? Are they gonna get contaminated? What about our roads, our yards, our basements? They're gonna get filled with runoff if we have rain, like they did in Fleetwood a couple months ago. What about our health, our homes, our environment? Is it gonna be endangered if there's ever a fire? Toxic fumes? We live, and if everybody that's on Blyle, most of the time the wind comes right across the field, which is gonna be a field of solar panels. God forbid there's ever fire there, it's coming to our house. Who is going to protect us from that? Is the, again, traffic, you know, even as you're building. I know, hey, we're guilty. We go to Fleetwood, we're watching what's going on here. Added traffic. Traffic's of concern, you know, and then people are what? Trashing up the place, who knows what? What's gonna happen to our property values? I kinda touched on that. but. Just imagine, you know, there's two houses, exact houses, two different locations, one with the solar fields, one with the beautiful fab, you know, view that we have today. You cannot tell me that those two properties are gonna be valued the same. Now, if you discount the one at the solar farm, you know, then you can sell it. But nobody is gonna have a choice of two identical properties and buy the one with the solar farm. The other thing is, as you know, a wedding venue, put it in the beautiful location where it is today, put it in the middle of the solar panels. Which one? So, as property owners, we're trying to protect our rural character of our community, our homes, our investments, the wildlife that we enjoy. Who's, who, you know, who's looking out for them? We all want to enjoy, you know, our fields. So if you agree with me, you gotta vote no. And thank you again, Dale. Today, you guys, as I was actually writing my speech, you guys were out there. So here, I wanna show you the view that I have today. This is today. He was out there and, and I took the pictures. This is where I live right now. This is my view across the street. This is what I was looking at today. I do not want to be looking at solar panels. I don't. This is what we have today, people. Right here. This was today, around 12 o'clock. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Next on the list is Bruce Balthazer. Husband of Maria Balthazer. <laughs> okay, I want to talk about decommissioning costs. Um, all solar farms are temporary. They have a finite life. 
They produce electricity for so many years while their output continues to decrease and eventually they become unprofitable. How long a solar farm is viable is up for debate. One thing that is not up for debate, solar farms will need to be removed at some point and the land restored. This is called decommissioning. Decommissioning will happen for the solar farm. The questions remaining are, when will it occur? And will Mountain Trail Solar still be viable at decommissioning and willing to pay the full cost to return the land to farmland? Fortunately, a decommissioning bond is required by Windsor Township Solar Ordinance uh, provision O section speaks about decommissioning the solar farm at any time. The farm is not in use for six months or at the end of its useful life and shall be completely removed within 90 days. The ordinance requires that a bond be posted in the amount of the estimated decommissioning cost and escalated by 10% every five years. Any additional costs at the end of decommissioning are the responsibility of the solar farm. Page 12, number 35 of the Mount Trail Solar Farm application states it will post a bond to cover decommissioning costs, but it does not address the amount of the bond to be posted. Why not? What is the proposed bond amount? Decommissioning bond is not in the application, but it's required in the solar ordinance, so you must vote no. no. Thank you. Next on the list is Mark Reed. I'm here today to, uh, you answer the question up there in regards to the potential of, uh, of, a, of an emergency response for a fire. Um, my question is, you know, you're saying that there's no additional resources they need and things like that, but where are they going to get the water from to extinguish these fires? Are you going to put a well in there? Um, there's no fire hydrant system out there. There's no ponds close by, anything like that, except for a small creek, and you're not going to pump water from there. Um, if anybody in here is familiar, a couple weeks ago we had a fire here in uh, Lenhardsville, and uh, it took numerous fire companies to respond to a much smaller capacity fire than 440 acres of solar panels. Um, they had to call in additional support because our local fire departments are all volunteer. They don't have, you know, large numbers of people uh, to, to fight a, a fire, a massive fire if it breaks out. Um, so. Uh, you know, you're talking toxins, and, and I know you said that, you know, as long as these things don't, you know, there's no damage to them and stuff like that. What happens if a major fire breaks out? Now, how about putting the, the, the toxins that, that are going to radiate from that, the smoke that's going to flow across the Blau Road for the people that live across there, Sunday Drive, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, my, my suggestion is, is that the panel here votes no on this. Um, I, I, I just don't see them handling, you know, our, our local fire companies handling a, a, a capacity of, of a fire of 440 acres. <clears throat> Lois Dieters. Well, good evening. I just have a few words. Um, I live on the hill on Sunday Road that will be overlooking a vast area of these proposed solar panels. Um, from my home, I will see at least 100 acres of the 150 field of solar panels. My, my concern is with the potential glare that this could have on my home, on the residents of those living on Sunday Road. Um, I'm concerned about the cars and the school buses, and we have many school buses traveling to and fro on that road. So um, I'm asking Windsor Township, please take this into consideration okay. and consider that. Thank you. Tara Green.
Hello, I'm Tara Green. Can you guys hear me? I'm a little vertically challenged. Uh, I'm at uh, 101 Stephen Drive in Lynn Hartsville. Uh, my husband and I moved here 17 years ago from New Jersey. We were tired of that crazy traffic and the crowded feel. We searched for months and months and all different places and we finally found the perfect neighborhood, the perfect house uh, set on three acres. Now going back to my beginning, I was born and raised in Virginia where my siblings and I loved playing outside until we were dirty. Our parents said don't come home until you're dirty. Uh, catching fireflies, drinking from the water hose, one of my favorites, making mud pies, <laughs> and watching nature change with all the different seasons. I always knew that I wanted to raise my kids this way um, and my grandkids when that time comes. With the possibility of solar farms, all that's going to go away. We will lose the beautiful landscape to overbearingly tall panels. We will be stuck with views of an eight foot fence. But that's not all. I can guarantee that our property will plummet if we decide to move when my daughter goes to college in two years to follow her. Can you absolutely ensure that safety and health will be priority? Will there be staff on site 24 seven in the event of a fire or other emergency? As Mark mentioned, where is the water coming from? What'll happen to our wells? Will they be affected? Can we see your emergency plan? And what about displaced wildlife? Where's the topsoil gonna go? I could keep going on and on, but I only have five minutes. Um, I will end it here, and I ask that our planning commission vote no for the solar panel farm. Next up is Alan Schaefer. Ron Stabil. Okay, good evening everybody. Um, a couple subject matters and I'll be brief. Uh, the first I wasn't gonna talk about, but it's, it's too irresistible. Jeff hit on it, home values. So they say no property uh, depreciation or no effect. We have studies, as many studies, that say 15 to 20%. We'll show you the, that documentation if you wanna see it. But it's, that's tit for tat, right? And all night long, environmentally problematic, non-problematic, right? We go back and forth on everything. So let's just stay with this one subject for right now. Because I got living proof within the last 30 days that they're fibbing. We have a gentleman two doors up from us who, who uh, bought his property, I'm gonna say about 45 days ago. He leaves happy as a clam, comes back for closing, and there's all these no solar farms, signs. My wife goes up to talk to him just as a neighborly thing to do, and he is pissed. He said no, no way would he ever have bought that property had he known a solar farm was going up across the street. If that isn't evidence, I don't know what is. And that was just in the last 30 days. To the Planning Commission, we're all here for one reason, and that's to ensure the health, welfare, and enjoyment of Windsor residences, which is at the core of our ordinance. But the emotions I hear from my neighbors, and I want to thank you, Dale, because I, and I mean this, I've got to know some unbelievable people that I never would have got to meet had it not been for this whole ordeal. What I'm hearing from them right now is bewilderment, confusion, disappointment, and anger, all of which contradict the goal of health, welfare, and enjoyment. It's hard to enjoy things when you're disappointed and angry. I think we'd all agree. But there's another more sinister emotion at work here. And Sue DeTurk brought it up at the last meeting. And it hasn't been brought up, and I think it's the biggest factor, fear. Think about that word. Fear of contamination, living too close to electromagnetic field, flooding, etc. 
This fear, whether justified or not, again, tit for tat, doesn't make any difference. It's real. If it's in your head, it dominates your day, every day. Again, in getting to know most of you, more than a couple. Now, how serious is this? More than a couple have considered or will consider relocating. Mm -hmm. If this goes yep. through. Yep, got it. I see the heads. What has ever happened in Windsor Township as consequential as this? You tell me, has there ever been another project that uprooted families? Because that's what's going on here. For that fact alone, you must say no to this project. It's simply not compatible with the 50 plus homes in that area. Thank you. Bill Knowles. Good evening, my name is Bill Knowles. I live at 206 Blau Road, which would put me right across the street from this monstrosity. Uh, I commend these guys, they're doing their job. They're like the rest of us, they gotta earn a living. But I don't want them earning a living off our backs, off of ruining our community, because that's what this is. And I'd like to also add to the Planning Commission, their job is not to make these people happy. Their job is to take care of all the people in this room and those who didn't make it. Your consideration are the residents, not a solar company, or one or two individuals who stand to make some money off of this. We have built our homes here. I've been here over 30 years. I raised my children here. My grandchildren are now at college age. I've got roots here. My family's got roots, and I'd like to keep them. And this, this is gonna put me on that list to pack up and get the hell out of here. I strongly urge you to say no to this. Thank you. Okay. Elaine Greaves. I just have a few comments. Um, first of all, I'd like to read from our own ordinance of agriculture, our land that we live in. Um, to conserve open land, including those areas containing unique, sensitive, natural features such as woodlands, steep slopes, streams, floodplains, wetlands, by setting them aside from development. Also, to create neighborhoods with direct visual access to open land with amenities in the form of neighborhood open space mm -hmm. and with a strong neighborhood identity. I think this project is everything against that. Also to conserve scenic views, which Maria spoke about. I live right down the street from Maria. I see those same views too. It's beautiful. I actually live a little bit lower than she does, so I'm going to have a really great view of solar panels. To conserve the scenic views and the elements of municipalities' rural character. And to minimize perceived density by minimizing views of new development from existing roads. To me, that's everything that this project is. It's going to take away all of that. That is the reason why, why we all even moved here, why we live here, why we love to sit in our front yards. I'm speaking about Lyle Road. Others, it's their backyards. But, you know, we love to sit out in the front yard. I have pictures of, and I wish I would have brought pictures like Maria did, 
I have pictures of my of my dog in the front yard. Beautiful scenery in the background, the farm fields, and the beautiful blue sky, the clouds. That's going to all go away. You're taking that away. And our planning commission, just as Bill said, you guys are here to represent this township, not the solar company. You're here to represent us. And we beg of you to say no. We do not want this. In reference to the presentation that was presented to us again today, a couple of added things that were in there. I don't see anything that tells us where they're getting these figures from. They say, oh, there's this study. There's these numbers. There's this. Where is all of this? It would have been great if you guys would have provided this backup study information and where you get these property value studies and tax revenue estimates that we're going to get. Um, and also, too, the, the Pennsylvania National Diversity Inventory, because it's my understanding that Hawk Mountain didn't know anything about this until they were contacted by one of the residents here. So that's very interesting. And also, too, I, I noticed that you mentioned, I couldn't find anything, but it states that, that your company has solar assets here in Pennsylvania. I found it interesting that you didn't list them in, the, in your presentation, but I couldn't find anything anywhere that you have anything in Pennsylvania. So um, it's my understanding that, that I, I couldn't find any on Leeward's website. That's all I have to say, but I do wish that you guys vote no. That concludes the list. Is there anyone else who hasn't spoken that would like to? I'd like to speak. Uh, if you don't mind, just please come down and uh, put your name on the paper, and the microphone is then yours. <coughs> Hi, I'm Dolly Sills, and I'm at 400 Stephen Drive, Lenhartsville. Um, so just briefly, when I, we had the meeting prior to this, um, I had mentioned two concerns. As a retired nurse, I am concerned about the um, impact on human health and life. And I was disappointed that when you were presenting your um, information this evening, the yeah, microphone, when, when they were presenting their information this evening, I didn't see anywhere where it was addressed on any kind of study on human life and health. So that was absent from <clears throat> the request I made last time. And although Hawk Mountain was mentioned, what wasn't mentioned is the, the effect on gain and small gain from the panels. So that was not mentioned tonight, and I would like to request that, that information be presented on those with resourcing for and your study results. Um, and I would like to make requests with all due respect that you say no to the proposal. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on down. So my name is Jim Steffel. I'm, I'm a resident of Tilton Township, I'm not Windsor. However, I did have some questions about the uh, impact on agriculture. And consider this uh, facility a rest for the land. Um, I don't know if I quite understood that. Uh, like everyone else, it would be nice to see the information, reports, with the bibliography, so somebody can look into it. Uh, I think that's a must. Um, and another thing on the remediation, uh, I was interested to hear that the, there's a bond required. However, there was some, uh, there was some uh, uh, escape clause in there, it sounded like, because this bond should be in place. And uh, how is this remediation going to go about 
I mean, you're going to drill holes in the ground here to put these to mount these, which was encouraging. At least you haven't got four buttons. However, I don't know if you, I'm sure you've done soil test out there. This is all shaley loams. Uh, in that area, probably eroded fairly well. So you're going to bring up a lot of shale. I'm not sure what that, what's going to happen to that, but even more interested how you're going to remediate that um, to, uh, to where it's at now. They're probably working on maybe somewhere between 6 and 12 inches at the most top slope. So I think uh, there needs to be a little, a little better documented uh, support for some of the information provided. Thank you. Because everything that's been stated ahead of me, I second and third. Um, because they're right. They're accurate statements. Statements we've heard from the solar farm folks are vague and nebulous. Uh, how far were these studies done from properties that lost value? 30 miles down the road, you're not going to lose any property value. Anyhow, I'm a retired educator. My background is health science. And right now, I'm semi-retired. I drive a school bus. Now, we haven't talked too much about vehicles, sun, shining, and reflection. We haven't talked too much about the health, safety, and welfare of our residents. How about our most precious residents, our children? Okay? Absolutely. You know? When I'm driving a bus, I'm good. But if I'm blinded, What can I say? And I have been on Sunday Road many times, Monument Road, Lyle Road. I know that throughout the course of the day, the sun will vary in its reflection, and the deflection off of these solar panels could easily blind one or more drivers, and all it takes is one bus with 48 children, your children, to be injured, and that's putting it mildly. That's putting it nicely. <coughs> putting it not so nicely, mangled. I strongly urge you folks to deny the uh, solar farm application. I'm Raylan Wood. We live in Windsor Township. I watched this group stumble through their program here tonight. It's very concerning because uh, if they're stumbling through this program that they're well prepared for, how are they going to stumble through this construction progress and everything they're going to do on this property? How are they going to treat the water runoff, like Ron said, back and forth? But currently, the basements are flooding along Vile Road. So, um, one thing, if this goes through, I would ask the board, supervisors, and anybody in this land development process, when they stick the shovel in the ground, to make sure every drop of water that comes off that property, currently and going forward, stays on that property. I mean, you know, they can prepare a development plan to keep all the water on the property. 
Otherwise, we have an existing problem that Windsor Township isn't even addressing. The water runs off in them fields and floods all them houses, including my own. And this has been going on for years. So we need to properly address that. That's a big issue. But um, one of the big things here is uh, currently we've been trying to organize a little bit for our community and find some information out about this. And we're by no means the professionals like you people are. But uh, we have our own packet of information. And a lot of it contradicts what you say, you know. And, and also in looking at your website and looking at your current solar units in Pennsylvania, we either your website's not updated or you're not telling the truth or if that's the case, if you got up, updated information on your website, what kind of outdated stuff are you going to have in your project? You know, I got a map of your website that shows projects in none are in Pennsylvania that are solar farms. You may have some windmills, but no solar farms. But uh, with that said, um, we've been meeting weekly out of my property. And we get anywhere from 30 to 60 people come out. And, you know, we start the meeting with a prayer, every meeting. And I heartily believe that we're going to keep praying that this don't happen. And it doesn't uh, bring our community down. And uh, I'm going to ask all you people in the room to go home and consider this and pray about it. You know, one way or the other, whatever we need to do, we need to get it straightened out. But uh, along with that, we have over 388 people that signed a petition. And these people are your neighbors. You know, these people are your friends. These people live in your community. They pay taxes. You know, to benefit a few people, anyone that can't realistically see, if you get, um, there's five or six of you up here, you got the Frederick family, Gasparri family, you people are going to benefit from it. But we got 388 people that are not going to benefit, and that's not including the families in their household. So I encourage each and every one of us <clears throat> to go back home and somehow, through the secret path, get a hold of the application from the solar company. Which, is that a current application that the township has? Is it the very most current and only application? Okay. 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 So we got a current application. Okay. We have an ordinance, right? I'm going to ask each and every one of you people to go home and get a copy of your ordinance from Windsor Township, get a copy of the ap application, and read it over. Compare the two. And go over it really good. And maybe if you can make it to one of our next meetings, bring your findings. Because there's a lot of discrepancies between our ordinance and our application. And you know, whether it be now or in the future, whenever the proper time is, we can address it, but there is, you know, and when these people stand here and don't have answers for questions they were prepared to come with, what's going to happen when they're not prepared? You know, when there's, a, when there's a problem at the project and they're not prepared to take care of it, who or what's going to take care of it? But I can tell you, my belief in my heart is down the road, these people ain't going to be around. These people are going to be back in Texas. These people that are putting the money up are going to be in Canada. You people are going to still be here. Possibly. <laughs> Some will. And all these 388 people will still be here in this community. So just keep that in mind as you go about it. I mean, if money's your big thing, there's lots of ways you can make money. If you need money that bad, there's plenty of ways to do it. You know, if farms need to be sold or things need to be done in a different way, you can do it. You know, so I just ask that you people... Uh, wholeheartedly uh, say no to this project and more importantly I know for a fact we need a stronger ordinance so you know it's got to be worked upon whether the people do it or the planning commission does it or or the supervisors do it but we need some real ordinance in our township to protect our families you know we have a lot of families here not just the people in the room there's families that go along with every couple that's here so I just ask that you do a few of these things and you know, if you can make it out to some of our meetings, I appreciate it. And we are very transparent. Everything's on the website. I just wish everybody was as transparent as we try to be. So if anybody needs any information, you can ask me or any member in our group, and we'll show it to you.
Well, I got a couple questions, and a lot of it goes back to what Josh initially asked. Uh, when you guys first came through, you guys sought a variance because his property wasn't large enough, right? And that was because of it being coverage for that single property. When they first came through, they sought a variance that was denied for land coverage. Right now, it's 22%, so I can answer that question for Josh. I'm going to go out on a whim and say it's enough. And the reason that he asked that is because if you look at uh, section on the DEP website, section 102, the BMP associates them with rooftop disconnection. So you guys, after three months, like you referred to, it's been a little more than that for you. Uh, are they or are they not pervious or impervious structures? He answers it, well, it depends. No, it's a black and white answer. It's not, well, many of these people, their properties are going to be affected by that. Is it concentrated runoff? If it's associated with rooftop disconnection, it'll be concentrated. Who's going to maintain these stormwater runoff ponds? Are you guys going to use valves? Who's cleaning the sediments out? That's all regulated by the DVP as well. Uh, I hear a lot of my peers talk about views. I rotate shifts. When I come home in the morning and I come off a of Hess Road on the Klaus Road, it is nothing for me to stop and look at the sunset across all these people's properties. It's nothing for me to stand in my front yard and watch a herd of deer run across. During migratory season, right across from your house, thousands of birds. Are you guys aware that Hawk Mountain presented a letter saying that they don't agree with this? Because according to that, it says they're fine. I mean, there's, there's quite a few questions I have. You guys say about $3.3 million in tax revenue. We have Cabela's, we have Walmart. Yeah. We got a lot of shit from when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and as I look around the room, I went to school with many of your kids. All days are Sankos. Even Mr. Wood, Mr. Bill. I work with some of you. I'm pretty sure Hamburg isn't near what it used to be. We have all this tax revenue that supposedly goes into this school. This LGI looked like it did when I was in eighth grade. <laughs> Nothing's changed. So what is your $3.3 million going to do for all these people? I look around, pretty sure this is the lady that built the house on the hill. I have neighbors that just moved in next to me. They have families they're getting ready to, to have. They want to grow up in a nice area. When I spoke to realtors, a house that sold right across from Henny's old property, that realtor had no idea there was a solar farm going in there. First thing that property owner did was put a fence up around it. They don't want to look at it. At least when they built the development over behind Kyle, over behind the Blue Roof Church. I can see a family for a while. When you put a solar farm in, Pennsylvania designates it as agricultural. Cool, you're harvesting a natural resource. The size of this project is what, 50 kilowatts? Roughly? Megawatts. Megawatts? That's industrial. It's an industrial complex. What prevents it in 30 years from you guys changing the zoning to saying, well, we'll just put warehouses in there? There's nothing stopping it. So I ask you guys to vote no. I look around. I'm pretty damn sure this is just about everyone that borders that property. And so. so if those questions where you guys still can't answer,
well over a year, because I'm pretty sure I was in an air cast when I first met Lonnie. That was a year and a half ago. You can't answer whether or not it's a pervious or impervious surface. You're a sales. That is it. Deal with them every day. Your product sucks. <laughs> I'm not used to this. I'm a little nervous. 20 years ago, we bought a property. We walked up onto the top of it, and I said, this is God's footprint. Look at this view. And we bought that property. We built a house. We've been there for 20 years. It's beautiful. You look out our deck, and all you see is farmland and the Blue Mountain. Views are great, and I understand that. We don't always get to pick a view that we want. But this is so pristine, this property. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. But it's not just the view. It's the community. These people are from Canada. This is like China. Are we just going to sell all our land to foreigners? What is wrong with us? We need to keep our property. This is the United States of America. It's not Canada. You want to build solar farms? Build them in Canada. Why are you building them in the USA? Because it's all burning down, but then you're poisoning us with your smoke. I don't see you guaranteeing anything. If there's a problem, 10, t 10 years down the road, who are we going to go to? Who's going to pay for whatever we lose? If our properties drop, Who's going to pay for the drop in the property? Are you going to be responsible? Who is going to be responsible for the damage that is done to us? Are we going to be able to come back to you in 10 or 15 years and say, I want reparations for what you did to us? Are you going to be around or are you going to go bankrupt in five years? And we're stuck with this mess. You need to go All right, going once. All right, you're going to be our, our last speaker for sake of time, and then we're going to move on. Hi, my name is Scott Fowler. I live on uh, Yeager Road. And I want to thank the uh, Planning Commission for allowing us to speak tonight. And uh, thank you to the gentleman from Leeward Energy for your presentation and information. Uh, I just want to mention uh, something rather short. Everybody's covered a lot of material. Uh, when I was looking at uh, re researching this project a little bit, I, I came across a document. I think it's the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. And they say for solar farms, they don't recommend that you build on class one, two, three, or four soils. It turns out that this project is going to be built mainly on class three and some class two soils. So that's kind of in, it's, kind of, it, it's not what the uh, Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture recommends. Now I saw an interesting statistic, 0.01% of the entire state is going to be covered, the agricultural land of this state is going to be covered by this project. That sounds like a really small number, and it is. But the thing is, Windsor Township is a little smaller than Pennsylvania. The amount of acreage involved in this project is 3% of the entire township. Something interesting to think about. So I would suggest the Planning Commission just factor that into their considerations. Thanks. So we went over this at the last meeting, but I wanted to recap for everyone so that there's no uproar and or celebration after uh, today's meeting. Um, today's decision is only a recommendation. 
the zoning officers are only here for a recommendation. Ultimately, the supervisors are the one that, that make the final call. So this is just uh, kind of the next step in the process. The supervisors are the one to make the ultimate decision as to whether or not this project moves forward. My understanding when I took this role was that the zoning officer's job is to look out not only for the best interests of the constituents, but also for the best interests of the township. I also live in the township, and um, although I cannot see the solar panels from my house, I will also be seeing them when I drive down Old 22. So, uh, with that said, um, again, today's decision is only a recommendation. Um, but at this time, we need to move forward so that the Mountain Trail Solar people can um, move on to the next step, which is meeting with the, um, the township supervisors. So uh, with that, I would like to make a recommendation that um, we deny the conditional use application. Um, do I have a motion? So we have a first and a second in the vote. Any opposed? Doris, opposed. That will be noted. So the, rec the recommendation is that the uh, conditional use plans be denied, which will be uh, moved on to the township supervisors. Any new business? No new business. Uh, Planning Commission concerns. Um, I have uh, two. One of which is the solar ordinance, uh, which I think we've all uh, discussed needs to be uh, reviewed and revised. And uh, I believe that we'll be doing some preparation for the August meeting where um, some of that will be discussed. Sure. I don't want to belabor this anymore, but uh, I just wanted to reiterate something that I uh, mentioned earlier. When, when the alternative energy regulations were adopted uh, six to seven years ago, which included the solar energy um, regulations, it, it was my understanding. And my name is Steve Hoffman, by the way. I'm, I'm the engineer. I'm not, I'm not a planning commission member. Um, I'm from Berks County, born and raised. Um, and I've, I've been the engineer for the township, uh, the planning commission for uh, since 2007. And uh, in 2017, when we were adopting these ordinances uh, or these regulations, it was my understanding, or my impression, that, that, that the planning commission and the township was doing that to, to get ahead of, of these types of projects. And, uh, and I mentioned earlier, had, had the township not taken that action, um, it, it would have been wide open. In other words, it, it could have allowed for more projects like this to happen. And I'm not saying it's good or it's bad. I, 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 it's not my position to take um, one way or the other. But it was, had, had the township not done it, uh, this type of project could potentially have been permitted any, anywhere in the township. So I, I, I hope we can take the temperature down a little bit um, towards the planning commissions. Uh, planning Commission members, because it, it is my impression that they were doing it, looking out for their residents. And had they not done that, you could have had multiple huge projects like this in the township, whether you think they're good or they're bad. But th that's that's my interpretation of it. So um, I just thought that that was that was worth mentioning. Thank you. And um, this is going to sound silly, considering what we've been talking about, but uh, it bothers me that there's a couple letters missing on the Edinburgh Park sign, so I'd like to get those fixed, if possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other zoning officers' concerns? If we're going to address the, uh, some of the ordinances here, I would like to go back to the accessory structure and take care of that concern I have, I mentioned earlier. I mean, if we're going to do the ordinances, I would like to a couple in there to, you know, revamp. Sure. All right, so accessory structures will also be uh, reviewed and potentially revised at the August meeting. Any other zoning officer concerns? No, I'm not. Uh, no correspondence. Any other business? Sure. Uh, the solicitor will explain next steps uh, for, the, the, for Mountain Trail Solar and their project. Thank you. So, so as uh, as Josh mentioned, uh, the Planning Commission's role here tonight was to make a recommendation. They have made that recommendation. So the next 
Uh, the next step will be for the Board of Supervisors to schedule a public hearing uh, to consider the conditional use application. Uh, keep in mind that the conditional use application is, is simply whether or not the, the township should grant conditional use uh, to allow this particular use uh, as proposed. The supervisors do have the authority uh, to impose certain conditions uh, on the, the, the conditional use. It is after that point if, that the project may proceed to, uh, to land development, which will then bring the project back here um, for consideration of land development and a recommendation uh, back to the supervisors. It's a bit of a convoluted process. You can thank the folks in Harrisburg for that. Um, I just wanted to make sure, make, make clear what, what the next steps are uh, so, that it, so that everyone knew what was gonna happen next. It will the, the first the first hearing will be in the, in the will be a, will be scheduled likely within the next 45 days. Um, I am anticipating that that the hearing will will be more than one evening. Uh, so so we we will certainly be scheduling that. Uh, I anticipate that there will be continue to be a lot of interest. Uh, the format of the of the hearing is is different is is different this this is a meeting um this is you know it's an opportunity for you for you to for public to air, air their concerns a hearing is 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 a is more like a judicial proceeding it's more like something you would see in court so there's going to be there will need to be testimony there will be witnesses there will be both direct and cross-examination uh it's not necessarily a place to make a speech it's a place to ask questions Uh, Russell, I had, in the event that the Planning Commission were to recommend approval of this, I did have some recommendations on conditions, being that the Planning Commission has recommended denial. Is it appropriate to even talk about potential conditions in the event the board would actually approve the conditional use? Or would that go to, directly to the board? I, I think it would be, a, if you want to see. I don't think it's inappropriate for for you to state what what those recommendations uh, would be, and I would also ask that you memorialize that in correspondence uh, to the to the supervisors. But but I but I would I would ask that you since we have all these people here who are interested, I'd ask that you that you also say state so tonight. Just to kind of explain a little bit, had had the planning commission. Um, voted to recommend approval of the conditional use, I would have recommended a number of, of conditions which are as follows. It's not necessarily a comprehensive list. Uh, there could be conditions added to it based on um, all the all the concerns and some of the things that I had already already considered. I, I, have, a, I have a list here um, that I will memorialize uh, more formally. Uh, number one was, was decommissioning costs. Um, uh, my recommendation would be if the board were, and this is all hypothetical, if the board were to approve the conditional use, number one would be um, we come to an agreement on what the de decommissioning costs are going to be. I, I, I think they're going to be astronomically high, um, and I think it would be a benefit not only to the township, but also the applicant for everybody to know what that number is going to be. Um, before, the, before the land development process really even starts, rather than wait until you know a final plan condition, um, because that, that it's a very significant cost. Um, condition number two would be um, uh, some type of regular water testing, well testing in the creeks and the wells, um, maybe annually, but biannually, but some sort of program for testing the water. That would be the second one. Um, third would be uh, annual uh, testing for glare um, and noise monitoring. Um, number four uh, would be a. Uh, uh, Investigating an issue that Polly brought up, Polly on the Planning Commission here brought up the uh, uh, an issue relative to the, the 100 acres uh, of ag land being owned by a, a non-resident. Russell, I don't know if you had had a, an opportunity to uh, research that that uh, that law. I'll have that for the supervisors. Okay. Okay. 
Um, five would be, I would recommend that maybe we have a, uh, an independent uh, expert review the, the plan for fire. Um, that, that, that's a uh, concern that was reiterated and I think that's, uh, I think it's valid, uh, particularly with the, the township being as rural as it is. Um, I think that that's, that would be a fair uh, condition. Um, and then lastly, number six uh, for my list, and again, this isn't necessarily comprehensive, um, would be resolution of the uh, interpretation of the zoning, uh, uh, the zoning regulation relative to lot coverage at 20% threshold for, um, for lot coverage. Um, so I, again, I will more formally um, memorialize this in a, uh, in a, in a uh, document that's available to, to the public. Thank you. And with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. First and a second. Thank you all for coming. Have a good night.